Hey gang, welcome back to another Solids Adventure. We're talking about Poisson's Ratio today. What is Poisson's Ratio? Do you remember? The Stay Puff Marshmallow Rule, right? Where you have a big marshmallow, right? And I squeeze it, ugh, and then as the longitudinal axis shrinks, what happens to the lateral axis, the crossways, right? The diameter, whoop, it's gonna grow this way, right? And here, bam, is the equation for Poisson's Ratio. Why is it negative? Because as one shrinks, or is negative, the other one gets longer, that's positive, and the negative divided by a positive is a negative, and then that negative over there turns it back into a positive. So Poisson's ratio, always a positive, okay? And for different materials, Poisson's ratios, we'll look them up. We can just look that up in the back of the book, okay? So let's see if we can work this problem. We've got this beam up here, and it's supported by two 30 millimeter columns made out of 2014 T6 aluminum. And remember, anytime that they give you a material in the a problem, you need to think to yourself, self, I'm gonna have to look something up on the table in the back of the book, right? All right, so it says if the beam is to remain horizontal, in other words, as this load gets applied, this side has to go down the same amount as this. So if this goes down 10 millimeters, this has to go down 10 millimeters, right? The deflection has to be the same, okay? So if the distance, uh, find the distance X, whoop, of where that 80 kilonewtons is to be applied on that beam to make it go down horizontally. And finally, tell me what the new diameter is of column A. So why would the diameter change? because of Poisson's ratio, right? If it gets shorter this way, it's gonna get bigger in diameter. So we have to find out what that change is. It's not gonna be a big number, is it? I mean, steel or aluminum even is not gonna deflect, it's not like a marshmallow, right? But it's gonna be a little number, but we can find out what it is, okay? So it started out 30, what's the new diameter? Let's see if we can solve this. Now remember, I've got all our equations that we've kind of covered so far over here. We've got tau's and sigma's and Poisson's ratio, shear strain, shear modulus elasticity, and then the modulus elasticity are Young's modulus, uh, and then strain, okay? So what do we know about, and, and strain is what? What is strain? Strain is deformation, right? So if this one is gonna deform, right, some delta amount, then this one over here, has to deform that same delta amount, okay? So what we can say is that delta of column A has gotta be equal to delta of column B, right? The change in each one of those has to be the same to maintain that horizontal displacement, right? Now, what equation over there do we have that has a delta in it? Um, that guy, okay? So, and we can rearrange that equation, right? So we can say that delta is equal to strain times the original length, okay? Cool. So what does that tell us? That strain in column A times the length of column A equals the strain in column B times the length of column B. All right. Um, what else can we write on that one? Well, we could do this one, right? We could solve that for strain, and then we could substitute that in. So strain is equal to sigma divided by the modulus elasticity, okay? So let's substitute that in for here. So sigma A divided by strain, no, modulus elasticity, not strain. It's putting a strain on my brain. Times LA equals sigma B divided by EB times LB, right? That's just substituting. All that's just substituting into that original equation. Now, what do we know about modulus elasticity? Well, A and B are both made out of the same material, so let's mul both multiply both sides by E, which makes uh-uh, that go away. And then what is sigma? Sigma is N over A, or we could say F over A, right? The force divided by the area. Okay, and so then we have, uh, we substitute in there for sigma, and we get the force in A divided by the area of A times LA equals the force in B divided by the area of B times the length of B. 
Again, both of these are the same diameter, which means that the areas are the same, and so we wind up with this. The force in A times the length of A, what is the length of A? The length of A is 220, some times 220 millimeters, okay, is equal to the force in B um, times uh, 210 millimeters, okay? So let's just do the little division here, on, on. So 210 divided by 220 is 0 0.9545, 445, 4, 5, 4, 5. 9 point, no, point, point, 9, 5, 4, 5, repeating, uh, FB, okay? So there is a little relationship between the force in column A and the force in column B. Superty duperty. That's really helpful. How does that help me? Well, what else do we know? Here's what else we know. Let's free body diagram this beam. Okay. Here's the 80. Okay. And what's supporting the 80? Well, some reaction force over here we'll call FB and some reaction force over here which we'll call FA. So if we do the sum of the force in the Y, Right, we get that FA plus FB is equal to 80 kilonewtons, right? Ooh, same variables as here. Let's substitute in there. Um, 0.9545 FBs plus another FB is 1.9545 FBs equals 80. And so FB has got to equal plus 1 equals, and then 80 divided by, answer equals 40.93. So FB equals 40.93, okay? Which, which now I can get FA, right, from this equation here, right? Because they got to add up to 80. So FA has got to be, how much is FA? Um... 80 minus 39.07. Kilonewtons, right? This is kilonewtons. Kilonewton. Don't kill the newtons. Okay. So there's FA and FB. That's the force in those two columns. Okay? So how in the world can we get... Um, the change in diameter. Oh, look, let's find out where this goes. What's x? So here's the distance x. What do you think? You know what I think? Piece of cake. I think a nice, easy moment equation, don't you? Let's take the moment at A. Okay, remember this is positive. So I have 80, which rotates me negative. So 80 times how far away? x plus FB times, and we know FB, don't we? He is 40.93. Let's put that in there. No, not smears. 40.93 times, what's that distance there? Three meters. Okay, do we want X in meters or in millimeters? Uh, it doesn't matter. So if we put it in meters, right, if we put a three there, we need to remember that X is going to be in meters, okay? So let's see. On 40.93 times 3 divided by 80. 1.53. X equals 1.53 meters, okay? So if, you know, the middle of this would be 1.5, so it's almost in the middle, it's offset just a little bit, isn't it? So it's just, just to that side of center. Okay, so that's where X is, and the last thing that they asked us to find is the new diameter of column A. Okay, can we find the new diameter of column A? What do we need to know? We need to know Poisson's ratio, don't we? So let's look up Poisson's ratio for this material. Okay. So Poisson's ratio, and we're on the metric table, 
So Poisson's ratio for a metric 2014 T6, the first one on the list, Poisson's ratio, there it is, 0.35. Okay, that's a straight look em up. So Poisson's ratio equals 0.35. So let me erase this and we'll have some room to go back and find that last thing. All right, so they want the new diameter of column A. Well, let's see. Do we know the stress in column A? Stress in column A is equal to P over A. We know P for column A. P is 39.07, 39.070. What? That was kilonewtons. I'm putting it into regular newtons, okay? Because I'm going to change it into megapascals. Divided by the area, the area is pi r squared, and the diameter is 30, so that would be pi times 15 squared, and that's millimeter squared. And then newtons over millimeter squared, of course, megapascals. Okay, so here we go. 30, oh, clear, 39070 divided by pi equals divided by 15 squared equals 55.27. Well, why are you doing that? Well, you know, number one, I already know what Poisson's ratio is. That's 0.35. If I can find strain longitudinal, then I can solve for strain lateral, right? And longitudinal strain, look here, down here, right, is equal to that divided by E. So we just found sigma, so 55.27 megapascals divided by E is going to equal strain longitudinal, okay? And it's going to be negative, isn't it? Because it's going to be compressing. The longitudinal one's going to be negative. Okay, so divided by E, what is E for 2014? Well, guess what? We just need our little book here, don't we? So E for 2014 is 73.1 gigapascals, 73.100 megapascals, isn't it? Okay, got to move the decimal three spots to go from giga to mega. Okay, here we go. So 55.27 divided by 73.100 equals point. So strain longitudinal is equal to negative point one two three zeros and then seven five six and that's millimeters per millimeter okay so there you go there's strain longitudinal okay so let me erase this so the last thing I got to do is I, I'm going to use this Poisson's ratio here so point 3.5 is equal to strain lateral and the and the negative and the negative cancel out make a positive right divided by 0. 0.000756 okay so the lateral strain lateral is equal to here we go um 0. 0.000756 times 0.35 equals point zero 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 two six four six inches um, inches sorry millimeters per millimeter right so they asked me for the new diameter so what's the change in diameter well it's going to grow point oh 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 two six four six for every millimeter I have and how many millimeters do I have thirty so times 30, right, it's going to grow 0 0.007938. So 0 0.007938 millimeters is how much it's going to grow, okay? I just multiply this guy times 30, okay? Well, guess what? That's how much it's going to grow. It was originally 30, so the new diameter is 30 point. 0, 0, 0.007938 millimeters, right? It doesn't grow a lot, but it grows a little bit. And that's how we use Poisson's ratio to find the change in diameter when you know a change in longitude, okay? I hope that helps, 
and I'll see you here next time.